Hello, and welcome to Get In, We're Going Healing. I'm Tova, your host. Excuse my squeaky chair. I guess it wants to talk today. Um, so today I want to talk to you about the journey. So what does that mean? What do I mean by the journey? The journey is the healing journey. The healing journey that we are on if you are listening to any self-improvement shows, if you are reading books on self-improvement, if you are reading articles, if you are listening to podcasts, or you're listening to audiobooks, whatever, you are on the journey of healing. If you are facing your wounds, you are on the journey of healing. If you are trying to better yourself, you are on the journey of healing. So what I want to talk about in the journey of healing is the journey. Okay, so where to start? All right, so everybody has a path. Everyone has a path that gets them from where they are to where they want to be or where they're going to be, not necessarily where they want to be per se. That's tricky. We'll get into that in a minute. The thing is that the place that you need to be, the place that you're supposed to be, your full potential, your best self, your highest self, your greatest version of you, the most enlightened, the Buddhists call it enlightenment. I mean, there's lots of different ways, but to being the best you, the path that takes you there. We all got one, all of us, we all have one. But here's the thing. We often think of it that it's a straight line that you go from here to here. And once you've learned something, on your path, let's equate it to a video game because I've always liked this analogy. I use it a lot and I'm, I'm gonna give it to you guys too. It's like a video game. So those who are familiar with video games know that in order to get to the next level, you have to beat a certain boss. You have to go through the challenges on that level and you have to beat the challenges. And when you beat the challenges, you move to the next level. Well, I feel like spiritually growing individually as we grow, it's a levels. So sometimes you end up repeating the same level over and over and over and over because you just can't quite beat whatever it is that you need to beat. You can't solve whatever it needs. So you didn't learn whatever lesson you need to learn there and you don't get to move forward yet. So you get that lesson repeated to you again and again and again and again and again until you figure it out and you move past it. Now, along our path, moving through the levels, we encounter different things and some of them are beneficial and some of them are at least on the outset looks like it's a problem it's negative it's we give it that term negative it's a negative thing at least at the very at the very least it doesn't make us feel the best so we get these challenges and i've always sort of felt like once we overcome that challenge once we have the aha now i know how to do it that we just know hmm. well, let me tell you sometimes your path does not go from this point to this point sometimes you learn something from this point to this point and as you learn it then think like plants going in retrograde you get to go back again and then swirly zigzag and then come back out again so you learned that lesson, but now you get to apply it. And so you're given new scenarios and new situations in which to apply the thing that you learned before. And when you don't apply that knowledge that you learned, you get to do it again and again and again until you go, oh, right. That's that thing I learned over here. I have to use that. Of course. And then you get to move up. You get to move farther down your path. You get to level up. You get to, you know, move forward. So the reason I brought this up is because I have, I have encountered one of those um, slipbacks. So I thought I had learned a lesson about my ego and when my ego was running the show and when my ego was telling me stories and being able to rise above that. I have not. Spoiler, she did not. <laughs> I did not. Um, I found myself caught up in an ego story. 
again, I found myself repeating an old story that I had, I thought I had already banished as not true. And somehow that story was laid in front of me. And I guess apparently I wasn't ready to see it, that it wasn't true because I bought it hook, line and sinker again. And then when I realized that I had bought it hook, line and sinker, that I'd fallen into that trap. And of course I had fallen into that trap without awareness. So I carved a swath of carnage behind me while believing that, that ego story. And I caused hurt to other people. And I essentially caused hurt to myself because I told myself these stories and I emotionally reacted to these stories. And I built up my anxiety and got all worked up around this story. If I had been able to see that the story was a story, none of that would happen. But I wasn't, I guess somewhere in there, I didn't really fully learn the lesson or I didn't fully integrate that lesson. So I was given this practice and I think failed. I think I got a big old F on that one. Big old F for failure, totally messed that one up. And I felt like garbage, okay, when I realized how bad I had stepped in it, how badly I had bought this story and how much of it I was, I, I was humiliated in my own mind for like, how could you have done that? And I just, I felt like crap. I felt terrible that I had bought this story again and that I had caused harm again and that I had gone and like worked myself up and created scenarios of what I was going to do and solutions and situations and and I had bought all of it and I got swindled a full out got swindled so I mean, here's the, the joy though as we learn our community as we become aware that we figured these things out yeah, we're going to feel like crap. When you realize that you stepped in it real big, you're going to feel like crap. But that's part of the growth. As so many loving, caring friends let me know, I had shared my status on Facebook of how I felt and how frustrated I was with myself that I had fallen into this ego story and hurt other people and that I was really struggling to forgive myself and I was really struggling to pull myself out of the guilt, really. And so many lovely friends reminded me that I'm a human being. And that means I'm going to make mistakes. And that means that's part of it. As you make that mistake, you go, oh, man, I made that mistake again. Okay, come on. I can do this. And then the next time you're faced with it, hopefully you remember and you go, ah, you can't get me this time. I see you. You can't get me this time. And you make a better choice. My friends reminded me, they called me and they reminded me to love the one who makes mistakes. The part of myself that made that mistake. And it was just a mistake. It's not the end of the world. It's just a mistake. To love the one who made the mistake. Love the one who hurt other people, love the one who feels bad for hurting those people, love, the, love you, forgive yourself for what you did. And on that token, as we understand how to forgive ourselves for what we did, forgiving other people too, and understanding that they are just as human as you are, and they make mistakes just like you do. And they do things that they didn't really mean to do. They bought into their ego story too, just like you did. To forgive them, to release and forgive and say, it's okay. It was a mistake. We'll try again next time. And understand that sometimes in your journey, your journey is not, it's back and forth, but it's also up and down and backwards and forwards. And it's not 
I mean, for those nerds out there, it's a wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. It's not linear. It doesn't go this way. Your journey is going to take you up and down and back and forth and up and east and west and north and south and all over the place. It's going to take you in every direction because in each of those things, there's something for you to learn. There's a lesson for you to learn. There's a person for you to meet. There's something for you to do. And sometimes you have to build on the lesson. You only get a little bit of the lesson at a time, just a little bit. And as you integrate that bit of the lesson, you can move that into the next lesson. And then you can build off of that bit and go, okay, well, I already know this. So how can I use that? And then build on that. It's tools. You're building tools in your toolkit. And you're not going to be given the full schwammy right out the gate. You're not going to know how to use it. You're given piece by piece that you can put together and you create this source for you to tap into when you need it. As I'm learning, and I'm also learning to accept support from other people, because that's something that I struggle with is believing that when people give their love and support, that they mean it. And it's not just empty platitudes, because of course I have trust issues. Um, I have a difficult time trusting, trusting other people, trusting that they mean what they say, trusting that the love they give is not without strings due to my own needs of healing, my own things that need to be healed and, and released. I have trust issues and I struggle. And I don't always believe that when people say nice things to me, that they really mean the nice things they say. Sometimes I believe that it's just saying nice things because it's what you do. And I was humbled to hear the love and support from my friends. I was humbled to receive a phone call from a friend to help me walk me through it and the feelings of guilt and shame that came up with realizing I bought into that story again. It was humbling and it was a beautiful feeling to know that so many people loved me and cared about me. And I was able to actually accept that and open to it and receive it for what it is without feeling like I didn't deserve it. I think that's the core of it. I felt like I didn't deserve somewhere in there. I didn't deserve for people to love me like that. So I couldn't accept it. But as I heal and as I grow, I realize that I do deserve love. I do deserve to be loved. And I often find I go about it the wrong way, often trying to force love and habits in the past involved manipulating people to get that love without really realizing that love was always there. I just had to relax into it and just accept it, not force it, but just accept it. So my journey has taken me into an up and then like an anger phase for a bit. And then like a, like bottomed out, like almost hit the pavement, but up we go again as I go to a new higher height. So I want to remind you in your journey, when you stumble, it's okay. When you get caught in an ego story, it's okay. You're learning to step out of it and you're not going to be perfect. You're not going to be perfect. I'm not perfect. I totally messed that one up. I stepped in it hardcore. <laughs> you're going to as well. That's part of the journey. It's unfortunate and it sucks, but part of the growth is getting to that point where you realize you messed up. And you remember that. Hopefully that lesson stays with you. And the next time you'll have a pause moment, or at least I, I hope I do. The next time I'll have a pause moment and say, wait a minute, is that really what's going on? Is that really what I'm seeing? I mean, this goes back to early episode with, uh, with Stephanie about fortune telling and catastrophizing and telling ourselves the worst case scenario and trying to predict what's going to happen in the future and then reacting to that prediction. 
I fell for it, man. It happens. So I just want to remind you on your journey, it's okay. It's okay that you stumbled. It's okay you messed up. It's okay. The important part is recognizing where you messed up so that next time you catch yourself and go, "Mm -mm, I won't do that again. That's part of the learning. That's it's a, a learn as you go sort of scenario. Everybody's path is different. Everybody's things that you have to face and egos that come up and the stories that get told. Everybody has a completely different one. So nobody can really tell you exactly how it's going to go. But it's about learning what tools you have and how to apply those tools so that when you encounter it, you'll know. And you won't end up doing what I did. And you won't, I mean, you're going to, you will. I'm sorry, just is, you're going to step in it. You're going to step in it hard. You're going to smear it all over the carpet and the floor. And you're just going to make a big old mess. (sighs) It is what it is. That's part of it. And then you're going to go clean up your mess. And you're going to apologize to those you've hurt. And you're going to, if you told other people about your ego story, which you didn't know was an ego story and you believed to be true, and you went and told people about that and besmirched someone's name because you were caught in a story. As my friend told me, you go to them and you tell them, I was wrong. I messed up. I was wrong. And you go to the person you besmirched, the person you wronged, and you tell them, I'm sorry, I was wrong. And if people forgive you or they don't forgive you isn't the point. Forgiveness isn't for you in that way, I guess. If people forgive you or not, That's not it. You ask someone's forgiveness. It's not about them forgiving you. It's about owning your mistake and saying, yeah, I did this and I wronged you and I'm sorry. And if they are still angry or they choose to forgive you or they choose not to forgive you, if they choose not to forgive you, that doesn't take away from your apology. You're not apologizing for the purpose of getting forgiveness to make it all go away. You're apologizing because you recognize that you messed up. You recognize you did something that you shouldn't have done. And you're acknowledging to the person that you messed up and that you caused them hurt. That's what it's for. It's not so that someone can say, I forgive you and then all is forgiven and everybody moves on because it's, that's not really real. Not really. The whole point of apologizing is what I said. It's acknowledging the wrong that you did. And it's hard. I'm going to be the first to admit it is hard to come to people with your tail between your legs and say, yeah, I messed up and I'm sorry. It's hard. It takes a lot of strength and courage to not only recognize that you made a mistake, but own your mistake and apologize for it and full out own what you did. It's not about excuses. There may have been excuses, but it's part of your learning, right? It's regardless of what caused you to mess up. It's just saying, yeah, yeah, I messed up. I'm sorry. So let me tell you, I had to... I had to do that myself. And it's been a learning curve to learn how to apologize because that was not modeled for me. So learning a proper apology, learning, and not just like a a kindergartner's design, but like truly understanding what an apology is. Recognizing where my faults are, recognizing where I still need to grow. And I had gotten lazy. I thought because I've done so much growing in the last year that i Somehow I believed that I was immune from messing up. I don't know why I thought that, but I did. And I did mess up. I messed up hard. 
And the frustrating part is I've been pulling my tarot cards about it and my tarot cards have been telling me about it, but I misinterpreted the message because it filtered through my ego. And by the time it was absorbed and incorporated, it had been twisted from what they meant. And they had been sending me the card of projections and they'd been sending me the card of guilt and they've been sending me I've been repeatedly getting the card clinging to the past like repeatedly that came up in like six readings that I was clinging to the past and I'm just ah, I don't know that's it's got to be something else it's, it's got <sighs> yeah the warning signs were all there and apparently I just did like this and covered my eyes Oh, well, the lesson will be learned whether you pick up on the signs or not. It might be a little more disastrous than you originally intended, but the lesson will learn, be learned. You will understand it. It will be sent to you in a way that you might not be able to miss. If you don't figure it out, it just gets louder and bigger. But I'm hoping that through the recognition of this big mess up, the awareness that I was caught in such an ugly old storyline that I thought I'd gotten rid of. It now puts me on the alert for that storyline that when I start to notice that storyline come up, I go, ah, 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 you know, that's a story. Don't fall for that again. Now I recognize it and hopefully I won't fall for it again. Hopefully it won't be another pitfall. I hope that this time I like full out legit learn this lesson so I don't have to do it again because I'd like to not do it again hear me universe please <laughs> please don't send me this message again I think I've got it <laughs> you can test me but like not too hard okay <laughs> I'm trying um so yeah if you mess up it's okay you're going to have times on your journey where you're going to be top of the world. You will have learned a lesson and you feel amazing. And you look back at how far you've come and you're like, wow, I can't believe I did all that. And then you're going to fall in a big asshole. And you're going to wonder how the hell you did that too. But you're going to climb yourself back out and you're going to get back on your path and you're going to keep going. And then you're going to trip over a giant log and wonder how the heck you didn't see that giant log sitting on your path. And you're going to get up and you're going to wipe the dirt off your knees and you're going to keep on going. And you're going to have people meet up on your path and then they're going to walk with you for a bit and then they're going to skedaddle and head on their own direction. And you're going to, you're going to have some conflict on that path. That's part of the growth. Don't be too hard on yourself when you mess up. I'm learning that. Don't be so hard on yourself. You, you're human. You make mistakes. We all do. We all mess up. We all make mistakes. We learn from them and try to do better next time. So that's what you're going to do. When you mess up, you're going to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, learn what you need to learn and keep going. And if you didn't fully integrate that lesson, be prepared. It's going to be given to you again. And hopefully you see it next time and you go, what? You can't fool me and you miss it. I hope that for you. I wish that for you. So that's your lesson for today. Sometimes we fall. Sometimes we mess up. Your journey is a long one. It's going to encompass your whole entire life, but it's worth it. And the people you meet on it and the connections you make are totally worth it. Keep going. You're doing awesome. So now we're going to move to our tarot portion. My favorite part, we're going to move to our tarot portion. So I've been doing a lot of tarot pulls for myself as of late, like a lot, uh, probably maybe a little too many, but it's also in the spirit of practice. The more you practice, the better you get. So I'm working on practicing my tarot. By the way, if anyone would like to have a reading, just as I learn and practice, um, I'm more than happy to ouch, so change positions. Oh, muscle cramp. Sorry. Um, I'm more than happy to help out. Like I just, I want to practice 
and get familiar with it. So um, send me an email, send me a message at get in, we're going healing at gmail.com um, or send me a message on Facebook or on Instagram. I'm on Facebook at, and Instagram at get in, we're going healing. Um, you can find me both Instagram, Facebook, you can email me. Um, and if you like what I'm, what I'm doing on this channel, if you, uh, if you feel this resonated with you in any way, feel free to support the channel. Um, I have a Patreon though. I'll be honest. I haven't really been keeping up with it. I'm still trying to figure this stuff out. It's really new to me. And I have a, a kid and a home I'm maintaining and, and a lot of healing I'm processing right now. I don't really have as much man hours as I'd like to, to actually invest in figuring out, um, uh, the, uh, sorry, brain fart, um, the Patreon account. I'm still figuring that out. I'm working on it. I'm, uh, we're getting there. I'm working on it. Um, hopefully I should have, uh, some stuff up pretty soon. I hope, I hope it, we'll see how things shake out. Um, so yeah, I've got the Patreon. You can send me, a, um, I want to say it's Get In Healing. You can send me a donation at um, buy me a coffee, buymeacoffee.com slash get in healing. And you can also send me um, a donation, a tip, well, whatever, um, to uh, my PayPal, which will be listed below. Okay. Um, and then I'll link out anything else that I think that you might like. So, all right, here we go. Let's get into our cards. So we're going to give a shuffle and ask, what does the collective need to know today? What information should we share with the collective? What do you want everyone to know? Let's see what comes out here. What is the message for the collective today? When people are seeing this, what is the message for them? There's one. Okay, first card come out, the outsider. Okay, the outsider. In this card, what you see is a little child standing behind a gate. And they're, out, they're looking outside the gate, wanting to go out and play. But if you look really closely, you'll see that the lock is actually not locked. The lock and the gate is open. Okay, it is open. So what this card means is that you're on the outside looking in, you're watching life happen, you feel like you're being left out. But if you just look a little closer, you'll see that it's all available to you. You're able to get out there. The lock is open. It's free to open the gate and go. It'll be stopping you. It's understanding that you are not as outside as you think you are. The opportunities are available to you. You just have to look a little closer, okay? I hope that made sense. Let's see if there's any other messages. Anything else that the collective needs to know today? Whenever they're watching this, any messages? We have letting go letting go. So in this card, what we see is we've got some lily pads and we've got some raindrops on the lily pads. And on the one lily pad at the top, you've got a drop just dangling, just dangling, ready to fall into the pond below. And below you see the ripples in the pond from a previous drop. What this card means is that it's time to let go. You're dangling on the edge of the leaf. You're holding on to something old. You're holding on to an old idea. You're holding on to an old life. You're holding on to something. It's time to let go. It's time to let go of who you were sitting on that lily pad and drop into that pond. Become part of the whole. Become part of the group, the consciousness. Let go. Let's see if there's anything else. Anything else? For those watching. Ooh. Oh, that's maybe too many. Three follow-ups will take you. Pass these ones through one more time. Anything else? Oh, that's a lot. Apparently, there's a lot to say. Maybe even last ones that I got out. Okay. So the next one we have is inner voice. Inner voice. So in this picture, what we have is we have the dolphins playing on either side of a moon. We've got a lady on the top with a crescent moon on top of her head. 
We've got a crystal in the center. We've got plants. We've got water. So this card talks about your inner knowing, your inner self. So your inner awareness, the playfulness of your inner spirit, your inner voice. This card is also asking you to go into your inner self. Don't do, do some more meditation. Do some more inner work. Go inward. Listen to your inner voice. And it's, it's your higher self. It's your intuition. It's your real self, not the ego self. It's asking you to connect with your higher self, your higher voice. So we've got a few other, oh, these are all good messages. Okay. So we're getting some synchronicities and repeats. Okay. Harmony. Our next card is harmony. We've got harmony. And in this card, we've got this person sit, sitting here in meditation and the dolphins in the picture, the two dolphins are jumping from the heart to the head. And this is, we are in harmony when we are connected to our hearts, when our thoughts are coming from our hearts and from our feelings from our love, when we are thinking thoughts of love and we are thinking thoughts of connection, we are in true harmony with ourselves and with the world around us. It is a reflection of that. So we also have the next card that came up was exhaustion. So in this card, we see this guy who is in this big robot, this big machine, and he's in control of all of it, but he looks absolutely exhausted absolutely exhausted because he's running this big machine, this big machine of self-importance. This is the machine of self-importance. This is the machine of who we think we are. And we're in here running it. And we're, uh, we're running it and we're tired. We're tired of running this big self-important machine. It's exhausting. We want to actually be ourselves. We want to actually relax and enjoy, but we're just so tired of being this person, tired from being this person that we think we're supposed to be, this big machine that we think we're supposed to be, doing the things that we're supposed to do, saying the things we're supposed to say, wearing the things we're supposed to wear, being the people we were sup supposed to be. But you're not actually the machine, you're the person in it who's exhausted trying to do it all. Take a break. The world will not stop running just because you took a day off. The world will not disappear because you took time for yourself. You are exhausted. Take a break, take a day off, go to the beach, have a fun day, go out somewhere, you know, just go sit in a park, go be with nature, go do something that makes you happy, something that brings you joy, get away from the exhaustion and replenish yourself. And in the same vein, that goes with our harmony and our inner voice and our letting go and our outsider that you're just, you're exhausted. And the way it falls, it falls underneath the outsider, which just connects even more. You're exhausted. You're watching everybody else enjoy life and you wish you could be, but you're not. Oh my gosh. I feel like the cards are reading me today. Man. You're exhausted from being the person you think that you're supposed to be. And you don't have to be that. You can just let go and connect with yourself and be yourself. And the next card that comes up says the same thing, the fool. In The Fool, we have someone who's just lighthearted. He's enjoying life. He's out there. Sure, he's a little precarious on the side, but he trusts that the universe has got his back. He is out there. He doesn't have a lot of baggage. He's connected to absolutely all the suits of the tarot. He is one with all of them. He is lighthearted. He's ready for adventure. He just wants to know. He just wants to be a part of it. He just wants to know that the world is there for him. So... That's what we've got in the fool. Be the fool. Go out into the world with wonder. Go out and see what, what does the world have to offer you? Go out with the eyes of a child as a noob. Go out into the world as a newbie. Go out and someone who hasn't been through the foibles and the, the struggles and the dramas that life has given you. Look at life from that beautiful perspective of being new, of wonder. What is it? Why is it? Where is it? How is it? Look at everything with that wonder. What, what does life have to do? Let go of the baggage and just trust. Trust that the universe has got you and enjoy. So to fall off of that, we also have past lives. And in this card, this talks about karma. Now, it's not people misinterpret karma regularly and think that karma is the energy you get for doing good or bad things. It's not, it's not quite true. Karma is something that you get 
whether for whether or not you are living your purpose, you are living your dharma. Your dharma is your purpose. The thing that you're supposed to do, your path, if you're walking your path, you gain good karma as you walk your path and you accrue negative karma. But I mean, negative doesn't mean bad. It's just negative karma when you are straying from the path of where you're supposed to be. Past lives is talking about releasing old karma, releasing old things. As you are breaking these chains, as you are healing, as you are growing, you are breaking the karma that has been passed down from family members, the karma that you've accrued in your own life, as well as the karma from your past, your past lives, your, your ancestors, all those different things. You are healing that. You are releasing that. Remember that you are who you are now. You are not necessarily those things, though they were part of you, but you're letting those things go. So you're on the right track. So just keep going. And our last card falls in the same idea. It's repeating again, synchronicities, innocence. In this card, we have this old man, this gentleman, elderly man, who's got a praying mantis on his finger. And it's, he's talking to it as if he, they're just old buddies having a chat. And he's just, hi, praying mantis, how are you? Whatever he's saying to him, having the mysteries of life, talking to this praying mantis. And it's all calm and relaxed. Behind him are blooms and flowers. And he's just peaceful and calm. An innocent conversation with a praying mantis. This card can also remind us to see the world as a child. Children are innocent without all of the damage that we throw on them. Children in general are innocent. They will have a conversation with a bee. They'll have a conversation with a worm. I've watched my child have a conversation with a worm. They don't see it as beneath them. It's just innocent. They just see the world as full of imagination, full of possibilities, full of amazement. And that's the same thing that fool represents, innocence. We are seeing the world as the potential of what it could be, not necessarily with all the views of what we have, of what we think life should be. So if I had to give a sum up of this entire reading, I would say that the universe, your guides, they are letting you know it's time to be yourself. It's time to let go of the things you thought you were and be who you are. And the best way, I'm getting chills as I'm saying it, the best way to do that is to just let go. Trust that the universe has got you. Trust that you're going to follow on your path wherever it is you're going to be on your path. Be the fool. Be welcome to an adventure. What does, what's on this path? What are you going to encounter? Who knows? It's about being curious and excited about what your path can hold for you and being innocent and not dragging with you the ugly and the baggage and the karma from your past, whether it be this existence or a different one. Stop dragging it. Stop dragging it. You don't need it. It's exhausting you. Let it go and follow your path and know that you are not on the outside. You are part of all of it. It's all you. This is your path. So yeah, I hope that made sense. On the bottom of the deck, oh, just for bottom of the deck energy, we're just going to, the card of sharing. And this card is as you prosper, you share your prosperity with others, your bounty. As you earn more financial abundance, you share your financial abundance with others. As you gain more emotional awareness, you share that with others. As you gain more emotional intelligence, more actual intelligence, I guess, thought intelligence, as you learn and as you grow, you share what you learn with others so that they may also learn and grow. That's such a beautiful card. So we're also going to pull out a couple of guide cards, see what our inner guides have to say. Okay, guides, any information for the collective day, whenever they're seeing this, whenever they're hearing it, what is the message? For the collective. Messages for the collective. Oh, yeah, one. Oh, oh, 
apparently there's a lot of messages. Jeez. Okay. Oh. All right. There's a few of these I have never seen before. So we may have to pull out the book for these. All right. So let's start with the first one. The first one that came out is purpose. Okay. And I'm going to say that's the same thing as what we've already been talking about. Living your purpose, following your path, doing what you're supposed to do, being the person you're supposed to be, collecting that good karma, following your dharma, being the person you're supposed to be, following your purpose, follow your path. That's what your guides want for you. You've also got priorities. So decide what it is that you want. Decide what it is you want out of your life and start moving in that direction. Let go of the things that don't serve you. Let go of the things that are not helping you build towards your priorities. If they're in the way, if they're stopping you, if they're wasting your time, if they're, you know, none of these are important, let them go. They are not your priorities. If your priority is moving forward on your path, like you see in this card, the person's moving forward on their path and they left this box behind of their stuff, broken hearts and all kinds of things that they don't need, let go of the things you don't need so you can move forward on your path unencumbered. Just like the, the fool, same thing. Don't leave with all this stuff. You don't need all of it. Let it go. We have devotion. Devotion would be reconnecting with divinity, the divinity within you. Reconnecting with your higher self, reconnecting with your purpose and your message. Reconnecting with you. And that is the same thing as our harmony and your voice cards in our tarot. The devotion is connecting back with yourself and with nature. You are part of divinity, reconnecting with yourself. And nature is a great way to do that. So if you can get out in nature, if you got a green space around you, get out. We have life force and Aphrodite. Ooh, Aphrodite. Aphrodite is the Greek goddess. Of Greek? Yes, I believe Greek. Greek goddess of love. And we have life force. And this speaks to our other point about going into your heart. Just like in our harmony card where the dolphins were, were jumping from the heart to the head, go into your heart space. Live out of a space of love. We have bravado from our warrior guides. And this card is telling us that we're talking a big game. We're talking a big game and we don't need to. Our warriors are there with us. Our warriors are there backing us. Our warriors have got our back. We can trust them. We don't need to talk a big game. We can live from our heart and show compassion and love. We don't have to be combative. And then these two cards, I think they speak for themselves, but I'm going to read them, look up the reading for them because I've never seen these ones before. We've got boredom boredom and spiritual teachers and then for our last card we have suffering and divine teachers so i'm going to look these up because i do not know these ones so let's look up boredom just so i can get an accurate idea of what it means life is relatively stable and calm now and yes you've achieved a certain degree of predictability and comfort on a day-to-day -day basis however something is lacking in the way of fulfillment your spirit teachers gather in response to this emptiness. They gently remind you that there's more to your life than you're presently expressing and are calling on you to remember your soul commitments of purpose and contribution to your fellow human beings. They confirm what you already know in your heart. Focusing on your interests alone will not fill your void. Trust these beautiful guides as they lovingly urge you to open your heart and share your time and gifts with others. They wisely counsel you that the restlessness, emptiness, and boredom you feel isn't the result of something missing from your life or something you've yet to attain, but rather is the reaction to unexpressed talent, creativity, and love in your heart, things your soul longs to give. Your spirit teachers invite you to take advantage of your present peace and certainty and use your good fortune to involve others, to involve yourself with those who are still struggling. For example, take a friend to lunch, help an elderly neighbor, volunteer at a liter literacy support organization, or spend more time with lonely relatives. Your spirit teacher's message, give more and your emptiness will subside. That's beautiful. Now you're bored, so give more to people. 
And so our last card is suffering. And I, as I've already witnessed this year, through all the many losses I've had, suffering can be a great teacher, can help you recognize where you need to grow. And I imagine that's going to be something along those lines too. So for our suffering card, it says accident, sickness, trauma, betrayal. An important part of being human and something that can't be avoided is the pain that comes with simply being vulnerable to the physical world. Your divine teachers warn that you're facing such a time. Sickness may be at hand and accidents, traumas, sudden loss and injury are predominantly or potentially around you. Whether confronted with something severe or just the ongoing struggle of getting through the day, your physical body may be challenged and pain and suffering may follow. This isn't meant to scare you, but rather to warn you that you're not as grounded as you should be. In fact, you may be attracting injury or drama to gain some personal space. Your divine teachers advise you to be open to the fact that any pain or upset you attract isn't without hidden gifts and opportunities. Your broken leg or aching back, for example, may provide the much needed rest you wouldn't otherwise take. Your runny nose and cough may give you the privacy you need to regenerate your spirit. It's also important to note that any pain or drama you attract isn't greater than your ability to handle it. The greatest upset you may face might actually be in trying too hard to avoid pain, which in the end may cause even more. In other words, the fear that you won't be able to abide any discomfort is more disabling than anything you might actually incur. In accepting the upset of the moment with grace, you'll gain wisdom, compassion, and strength. Your divine teacher's message, embrace and be patient with your pain. It will bring insight and understanding, and in time, peace. You will heal. As I suspected with that card, as I said, I have experienced great suffering over the last year, and it has been a great teacher. I have learned a lot. It is, I would not recommend it if given an option, um, but it is the way that it is. And through great suffering can come great growth. The bottom of our deck is the card of truth. Living in your truth, being your higher self, sharing your truth with others know that you, what you experience is true. It is your truth. Sometimes it can be an ego story and we have to be on guard for that and watch out for that. Um, actually, there was one thing I wanted to share with you about that, about an ego story that I heard somewhere and I wrote it down because I thought it was such a great thing to remember of when we are caught in our ego so that we can recognize when we are caught in our ego and can step out, which I thought was very useful. Um, let me just find it. I write a lot in my journal, so I'm not sure where it is. Oh, I should have had this prepared. Oh, well, it is what it is. Oh, okay. So how do I know when I am in the way of my higher self. And you'll feel tense, you'll feel stressed, you'll feel stuck. It's mostly a feeling of tension. I should have, that's already in my needle. I should have remembered that. When you are stuck in ego, everything feels tension. You feel lots and lots of tension. When you are in the flow and you are in a relaxed state and you are where you're supposed to be, everything feels calm and relaxed. So let's see if we can get a couple of messages from the angels. Oh, there's a quick one came out and there's two. So our first one says, honor your beauty. We've got this beautiful angel. She's absolutely gorgeous. And it says, honor your beauty, angel Jophiel. Thank you, Jophiel, for helping me discover my inner and outer beauty. So your angels want you to know that you are beautiful. You're beautiful inside and out. Don't neglect that. Your beauty is a gift. Your inner beauty and your outer beauty is a gift. It's not without its benefits. And it's not meant to manipulate. It's meant to enjoy. You are beautiful inside and out and it's a gift. And when you don't honor your beauty, you squander your gift. When you don't share your beautiful insides with others to help others, you squander your gift. 
when you don't share your physical beauty with others, you squander your gift. It is a gift. It is not a curse. It is not something to make you feel bad. It is given to you on purpose. It is meant for you. Use it to help others. And we've also got signs from heaven as our last card. Thank you, heaven, for sending me reminders of your presence. So you might see feathers. You might see little things around. I have been noticing a lot of feathers. I also notice butterflies a lot because I am, butterflies are the symbol of transformation. And I definitely notice when I see butterflies. This message, this is reminding you that the angels are always talking to you. They're always sending you messages. They're always helping you. Your spiritual team is always there. They are always guiding you. You just have to look for the messages and you'll see them. You'll see them in repeated things. Like I said, I see feathers. I see butterflies. I see things that fly. It's not necessarily, it has to be things that fly, but there's, I find messages in that. I hear messages in songs. These are signs from your spiritual team that they are there with you. They are here, but they hear you. They see you. They are with you. They got your back. So keep a lookout for those signs. And when you see them, remember that your team has got your back. So that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope that this reading touched you. I hope this helped you. I hope this talk helped you. I never know how it's going to shake out. I just throw it out there in the universe and hope that people see it and it, it helps people. I don't know. I don't know who sees it. I don't know who, if you see this and it meant something, shoot me a message, drop a comment. If you're watching on YouTube, share, like, subscribe, pass it around. I'm just here to help. I'm just a fellow human who's been through some stuff and is trying to help other people who are going through some stuff. So until next time, love and light, fellow humans.